So this video is just to show you how to install the transfer gear plate. It's part of the reverse Aru reverse drive kit for the 4EAT Subaru transmission. So what we've done so far, we've removed the rear housing that's in my hand here. So everything you see in my hand here, we don't actually keep, we can discard of this. So the rear housing's been removed. Uh, the top thrust bearing, we need to keep this, we reuse it. We've cut the plug off because we re reuse that to join to the resistor. We've removed the solenoid, as you can see, and then the blank off plate later on in another video. Uh, I'll show you how that situates on the back of the gearbox. So this is the top shaft, what it looks like when you remove it from the transmission. So what you need to do is press this uh, gear off this shaft and the bearing, and we reuse this bearing. So this is the top shaft out of a TZ1A or a TZ1B. And uh, this is the gear and bearing we just pressed off that shaft. Now it's important to note that the, the thrust bearing that seats here is retained. We need to use that again. And we also need to use this bearing here, which the part number is a 6010. Now the reason I bring this part number up is because if you've got a TV1B transmission, your top shaft will look like this. And it's important to note that this shaft can't be modified to work with the reverse Aru uh, reversing system in the 4EAT transmission. So if you've got a TV1B, you'd need to discard of this shaft and source a shaft out of a TZ1A or a TZ1B. And you'd also need to source uh, the bearing from that transmission as well to use at the top. And then you'll be able to modify this shaft to use with the reverse roux reversal kit. Okay, so now we've got to press the top bearing off the top gear. So this is the Subaru top gear. And we need to reuse this bearing, which is why we need to press it off. So I've just got a couple of sockets there. So we've got the top shaft in the four jaw chuck of the lathe. And as you can see in there, we've taken the two seals out um, just so they don't get damaged. So now that the ring's been parted off, the next step is to get this OD down to 46 millimetres. So now we have this at 46 millimetre OD. What we need to do now is get a four millimetre thickness between this face here and the back face, but it's very important that there's no material taken off the front face or the face of the surface of where the thrust bearing sits. All of the material that needs to come off needs to come off from this back side here. And then you'll end up with a four millimeter thickness between here and here. So now we've got this surface here at 46 millimeter OD, and then the thickness here that the verniers are measuring is four millimeters. Now it's very important to understand that you only take the material off the back of the face here and not off the front face. Uh, and the next job or the next part of this task is to part this off and then from the face where the thrust bearing sits out is six millimeters, which we'll do now. Okay, so just a summary of the job. First of all, we took the seals off the shaft, which are in my hand here, just so they didn't get damaged. Uh, the second thing is we parted this ring off. Then after that, we got this diameter here down to an OD 
of 46 millimeters right there. And then the next thing we did was got this thickness here between this face and this face was four millimeters. But as I mentioned before, it's very important that all the material comes off the back face and nothing comes off the front face. And then the very last thing we did was we got a depth of six millimeters on this section here from the face where the thrust bearing sits to this face here is six millimeters. And now we're going to undo this 35 millimeter nut and remove the diff pinion gear. So before I actually undid that nut, I did unstake, unstake the nut by punching these tabs up. Now you can remove the washer and then with the diff pinion gear removal tool that comes as part of the reverser kit, it's got a thread on the inside which goes on the outside of this thread on the gear. That was designed off the original Subaru removal tool. So you turn that on like that. And then again, this is a 35 millimeter bolt. So we've got the 35 millimeter already here. And now that that bottom gear is off, you can take the top shaft out. So this is a shaft that we already had the uh, top gear and the speed sensor ring already pressed on with the bearing. Um, we've made sure we've got the two seals in there and then we can go and install that shaft. So there's obviously splines on the end and an inner diameter that needs to meet as well. So you give it a little wobble, find the splines and then you can palm it in and you can hear when it goes home. So now we've got the transfer gear plate. So there's a couple of things that are important to note here. So first of all is the spline. There's a spline on the inside of the uh, diff pinion gear, which goes to obviously the diff pinion shaft. So you've got to keep that in mind. And the other thing you've got to keep in mind is that these helical cut gears meet as you're tapping it in. So we don't damage the gears. And the third thing is we're just going to make sure these bolt holes line up with the two bolt holes in the parking pole block. There's a tapered block there for the parking pole that when this shaft comes out, it operates the parking pole. Um, just got to make sure these holes line up relatively close to those holes. Now, these holes are actually manufactured oversized. There's two M8 bolts, M8 by 40 millimeter bolts that go in here, but these holes are oversized on purpose so that when the transfer gear plate is in there, you can actually tap up here or here, and then you can adjust the backlash of the top gear. So we'll go ahead and install this. Basically what we've done in the past is just Get a bit of transmission fluid for lubrication. So what we're doing here at the moment, I'm looking at a few things. I'm trying to get this here as square as I can in this bottom borehole. So it can't be, it can't be skewed like this or like that. It's got to be as square as possible. The other thing we're looking out for is up here. So I'm going to turn that a bit and then I can go up. And then I'm not sure if you can see on the video, but we've got to just watch for this part here as well. So there's a few things you've got to watch. Um, and now I'm listening for the splines. I can feel that as I turn this, the diff pinion shaft is turning. So I know I've got a spline there, that's good. And that's pretty square. Get it as square as I can. And then give it a couple of little taps. Important not to hit the gear. But you get a couple of little taps. 
like that. Just to get it started again, I constantly keep checking that the spline is right. Yes, I can see the diff pinion shaft is moving, so that spline's fine. I haven't interfered any gears here and I've missed this bottom part of the transmission. So now I can get a punch and just very lightly and evenly is important. Just very light little taps and this can take maybe a minute or two but as you can see each tap you make a little bit of ground so again I, I pause here and I'll just make sure yep that's definitely lined up I'm not interfering any gears here and I'm clearing here so we're good to go it's just little checks that you continually do along the way to make sure it's all going in square. And when you get home, you can hear it. You can hear the pitch change. So now that the bolts are in um, and still loose, but they've got Loctite on them, we can set the backlash. The backlash, um, I've got a 0.06 of a millimetre filler gauge. Not sure if you can see that. Um, but what we do is we insert it with these two bolts loose with Loctite on them. We turn the, the top gear clockwise. So I'm turning clockwise which means here, if you can see where that's pointing, this tooth and this tooth are actually contacting where there's a gap at the back side here because I'm turning it clockwise, the, back, the gap ends up at the back. So I thought I'd just pause and take a quick close-up video uh, to show you what I meant there. So when the top gear is turned clockwise, what happens is this tooth here butts up hard against this tooth here in the transfer gear. So they meet right there where the screwdriver is. They would be... Um, pushed up hard against each other, which then if you're turning clockwise, which we were, it would create a gap at the back side of this tooth of the transfer gear tooth. So there's a gap between the transfer gear tooth here and this tooth here, which is the top gear. So the feeler gauge gets inserted between these two. So again, this tooth would be hard up against here, but then there would be a gap between this tooth and this tooth. And so in there is where the feeler gauge should be uh, placed. So I insert, I've cut the feeler gauge down, you can see uh, into a shape that will fit. So I insert it into the back side of that. And the reason it's on an angle like that is because of the helical cut gear, so that's normal. And then what I do now is with this 0.06 millimeter feeler gauge in there, I get underneath the transfer gear plate and give it a little, I can see that closing up. Then you don't want to go overboard and then you want to feel the drag. So I'm, I'm a little bit tight there so I come down a tiny bit. Yeah, so I can go, I can go in and out there. That's in and out. And I can feel there's a little bit of drag, but not too much. And that's where we want to be. So now I can withdraw the feeler gauge. And we can tighten these two bolts up and I'll do that up with a ratchet in a second. And that's how you install the transfer gear plate and set the backlash. And now we'll go ahead and uh, put this nut on and the washer, and then we'll stake that over. So again, 35 millimeter socket. So just on that point too, the, the backlash between this gear and this gear is set from factory because the spigot is part of the transfer gear plate. You can't actually set the backlash between these two gears, that's set. Now, this will go in, um, this gear will actually tap in a bit so it's more level with that. But depending on the shims on the front of the diff pinion shaft, when someone set the pinion depth, will depend on where this gear ends up. So if this gear isn't lined up 100% with this one, don't stress too much, it means that um, like I say, this bearing in here is a floating bearing, so it can move in and out, all depending on what shims are used at the front of the diff pinion shaft to set the depth of the diff. And get the 35 millimeter socket. And as you can see, that just took up. So the last one of these we did, the gear, this is important to show, I'll try and point it out with the feeler gauge. There is a tiny little bit of a misalignment there but that's due to the diff pinion depth being different on each um, transmission by uh, a little bit so don't stress too much if they are 
are not aligned. So the last step of this process is just to stake this uh, nut over. So I've just got a really blunt chisel. And you stake the, stake the nut in the four positions after you've done the nut up tight. the transfer gear plate installation is all now completed. So we've got the blank off plate in place. We've got the resistor bolted to the blank off plate by these little M3 Allen key bolts. And then we've also put the little ring terminal on the top. So we've cut the resistor, crimped that on, and we'll put this fourth bolt in. And then we've got the standard plug from the 4EAT transmission. I've got some heat shrink up here ready to go. And then we can pull the heat shrink down over it. And then we plug this into this connector here. That can get a little bit buried. So uh, if you get along those pliers, you can sort of pull the top plug out like that. Get it with your finger. And then finger in behind. It's a bit hard, so it's hard to see on the video. But if you've got the finger in behind, and then you can click it in place like so, and then you can push it back down into the transmission. When you put the end plate on, it's important to make sure this is tucked up away from here. So you just tuck that up like that, and then this can poke down into the transmission, like so. So now we can do a few checks. We've got the resistor in, we've got all the bolts for the blank off plate in place, the little M3s are tight to hold the resistor in. These two bolts are tight. I've done those up with a ratchet. And it's important to see this thrust bearing now we've got to put on before the uh, before we put the end plate on. But it's important to see which way it goes. So you can see there's a split there, it's sort of offset. So the thrust bearing goes in that way to the transmission. So on the back surface, I just usually get a bit of transmission oil and it will stick there. And now we're ready to put the end plate on.